<clears throat> Sorry. Something in your throat? Well, it's it's a little parched. That's why I have some tea. Oh, I have some tea too. Cheers. Cheers. We're out in the air, by the way. Clean. Uh -oh. <sighs> Cheers, everyone. Welcome to The Secret Show. It's the Sipping the Tea edition. I'm Patricia Steer, and that, my friends, is Mark Sargent. Mark, you look so odd. Please tell us why you're wearing what you're wearing. Uh, what would they say at the Oscars? Who am I wearing? Yes, who are uh, so you I'm, wearing? I'm, what designers I'm, do you have on? I'm wearing several things. One, this shirt is from DITRH and the Flat Earth Podcast. Shameless which, plug for DITRH. Yeah, shame, shameless plug for DITRH when we were down at the meetup in Pasadena. He was lovely. Yes. Very nice shirt. I actually like it. It's got a little Nike logo on the on the side. Just do it. Just do it. Subscribe uh, to the podcast. Exactly. Uh, the hat is probably the most noticeable. That is by Chris Pontius. And it has uh, little LED things here on the brim and up here Wait. on the top. I didn't see a hat. What are you talking about? It's not that <laughs> noticeable. It isn't noticeable. It's good. No. Yeah, like one of those things on your face with hairs on it. Right? It's like a, a giant mole. Mole. <laughs> yeah. No. No. I and uh, what I've got tons of swag. Should I should I show all the swag that we've gotten over the last? Uh, swag. 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 Whatever. Swag. Mm. Do, do you want it. Me, do you want some? Please. All right. So you know some of this stuff. Some I might have some of the stuff here. You you might. Uh, and let's go for oldest first. Uh, you know, flatearthherbs.com. Mm. She sent us uh, scented soaps and special chapstick. Lovely. <laughs> you are a chapstick fanatic. I am a chapstick guy. My lips are very important to me. My lips are sealed. Ah, I see what you did there. Mm. A little, little ladies track. Go goes. It's good. You're, I'm fully aware of, All right. of who it was. Uh, let's see. Also, she sent me a little bag of uh, uh, like a potpourri bag for I don't know where I'm going to put that. Uh, and then she sent you some of those, you know, those hand those hand knitted. Yes, yeah, some um, fingerless gloves, which I'm going to wear on a different show and then talk okay. about her. Cool. But it's really cool. And uh, we are talking about, um, uh, well, Reggie Shaw, I guess is how you right. say name. Right, 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 right. R E G E, and I don't know if it's pronounced Reg or Reggie Shaw. She's the designer of Red G Designs mm -hmm. and Just Lavender. So it's kind of the same company with two different names. And flatearthherbs.com. Oh, yeah, exactly. So um, if you want more information, I'll put a link in the description box right. when the show is through. What else do you have? Here's that little thing of potpourri she gave me, too, right here. Does it smell nice? Yeah, it does. It's pretty. It's it's strong, but it's kind of got a little fruity, little some some notes of mint. I don't think I would smoke this. You could try. It was what I'm saying. Uh, and then I also got a book from Suzanne Borjo and Emric. Oh boy, Jillo. What I now, say Suzanne is, is the writer of a Flat Earth children's book. That's this is it right here. This is the Flat Earth Children's Book. It is called Granny Knows the Earth is Round and Flat. See? Interesting way that she's putting the two together because that's what people always say, round, round, round. So right. it can and be round really, and flat. It's really, really cool, by the way. Uh, and, and I will be giving this hat, uh, unless people really, really dig it and they want me to keep wearing it on the no, show. No, I think sometimes. probably everybody will tell you to take Everyone, it off immediately Eric. and that you're making Flat Earth look ridiculous. Really? However, I, I, I know you're wearing it because you love I, Chris Pontius and it's all in good fun. Well, the, the uh, Dan the Waterman gave it to me when I was at the meetup in Pasadena. He goes, take this home. And it actually runs, not only does it run on a USB cord, but also runs on those little cell phone charger things. So I've got a little cell phone charger. That How goes convenient. I know. Isn't that cool? I was thinking of giving it away to some some lucky fan, some lucky kid at uh, or whoever at the convention in, in November. In That's a great idea. Yeah, that would be kind of fun. So a uh, real quick story, though. Uh, you notice the girl here on the Flat Earth Children's book, right? The redhead? Yeah. yeah well, she didn't used to be a redhead. She did, used to be. Did you used to cut? Did you color it in yourself? <laughs> no, no, no. They had to change it because the artist... Uh, from Africa, he didn't realize the copyright laws in the United States, so he made the girl look almost identical to the youngest daughter in Despicable Me. 
the movie. Oh. The dark haired girl with the giant eyes and she had her hair pulled up straight up off the top of her head in a scrunchie. Yes. That's what her she looked like in here. And when she put this book out there for like just semi so self public publication, they came after her and said, Yeah, sorry, you can't you can't sell the book as is. It's it's too close to what we have. So the book is published now and people can purchase it, correct? Yes. Yeah, just look it up. I don't know exactly where it is right at the moment, but it's called Granny Knows the Earth is Round and Flat. And now it's perfectly fine. And they, the, they, they the changed author her eye, eye color as well, I think. Flat Earther. And I will put a link to that in the description box as well. Yeah. I thought that was kind of fun. I have a book too. And this is a book that many of us uh, received at the Flat Earth Conference in Edmonton, Canada by a Flat Earther. And I'll show it to you here. Is it called Grounded? You're grounded. Yes, it is. And it's a Flat Earth Awakening by Amy Evangeline. And she is uh, the author of another book called Mothers of Poetry. Link That's in the description her. box as well. That's her on the back. You guys probably yeah. recognize her from the ABC News interview. Exactly. Yeah. So what else do you have? And I was going to ask you before I went to the next thing. Have you ever? Were you ever grounded, or are you one of those kids? I'm that still was... grounded because my mother grounded me for life, so I think it's still in effect. But I do still go out. I don't think awesome. my mom's gonna get you, me. You you pissed them off so badly that that you actually got grounded for life. For life, yeah. Mm -hmm. You want want to tell me what it was? I was the eldest child, and if you're the eldest, the things you do aren't that bad. But it's your parents' first time dealing with teenagers, and they crack down hard. By the time my sister, two years younger than me, came around, and my brother, four years younger, they did the same stuff I did, and my parents didn't blink an eye. So probably I was grounded for something like staying out past curfew. Nothing major. Yeah, yeah. You, you know, Greg Brady ran into the same sort of thing. Really? He, he and Marsha both caught hell. Uh, but Peter and Jan... And Cindy and Bobby, oh my God, they could start fires in the neighborhood. I don't think they'd say anything. So, uh, but Greg always caught crap. He got he got crap for not not walk, keeping his eyes on the road when he was backing out of the driveway or something like that. Well, that's an important thing. People kill their pets. They kill small children. They run over bicycles. Come right. on. Plus, remember they also broke that vase in the living room. Don't play ball in the house. Safety first, kids. Yeah. Remember, hugs and not drugs. Okay, uh, also got this at the conference. I don't know if you ran into this guy. This is a guy who made game, who makes games. He yes. makes something called Hand to Hand. And I actually schlepped this back with me in my suitcase, which was not easy. And because uh, I, I thought it would get crushed for sure. It's called the Hand to Hand Flat Earth Edition. So there you go. And it comes with a cool little thing of instructions and some playing pieces and he was a very nice gentleman i enjoyed i enjoyed meeting him so fun. we have uh, flat earthers who are at the uh, conference who created games who wrote yep. books um also posters who, yeah earth, lots of i think things. was it flatearthposters.com i don't know if you still have your thing i've got it i brought it flatearthposters.com information here and also many, many oh stickers. You, kept, you kept your stickers you know who yeah. has my stickers who i gave it to i oh. gave my stickers to that very sticker sheet to d marble Oh, nice. I, I could think of no one better because I ran into him at the Seattle meetup, North Seattle, up in Lake Stevens. Just the other day. Just the other day. In fact, it was, yeah, it was just the other. Oh, my God, it's 3.33 right now. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> it's 5.33 where I am, so I'm saying oh, you're, you're in safe. trouble. I know. Um, by the way, there's the stickers. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I'm going to put a link in the, I just, you know. Yeah, the stickers are awesome. Link in the description box to all of these things. So you're going to see some of those on D Marble's van, which is awesome. Yes. And then last but not least, I think I got it all. Last but not least, I don't know, kind of a long swag day, mm -hmm. is this. And you probably recognize this. Da, da, da. Yes, it's the red hen. It's the red hen. Not to be confused with the white rabbit from the Matrix. But or the red hen from Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you can you chase this this hen down uh, hen, hen holes? <laughs> Whatever. And anyway, the point is, it's Matt Long. Yes. So uh, the most eligible bachelor in flat earth, Matt Long, uh, has his own thing called, I think it's redhen.com. Is that what it I is? I think that's what it is. Something along those lines. Link will and be in the description box. <laughs> very, very subtle t-shirt. There's nothing on it but this little icon. Right. So it's kind of a mystery. It's like, wait, what's the red hen? It's a conversation piece. Yeah, it is a conversation piece. So I've got that. I'm going to be wearing this. I'm not giving this one away. 
And uh, badges, we don't need no stinking badges. Uh, well, this is for the uh, the conference in Edmonton, Canada. Right. Save I, mine. I, Save mine is in my bag. From Raleigh. And, mine's in my bag. Yeah. And, and don't, don't, don't forget to keep that lanyard for the... Uh, Oh, I've got a special lanyard. Do we want to talk about it or not? No, we don't have to necessarily talk about it. You get a well, special special lanyard. Uh, the speakers at the Denver conference, I will be making sure I pass some of these out. Yeah, I'm just showing people what they say on it. It's yeah. flat earth, flat earth important people. Yeah, flat earth important people over time. Not modern right. day, but, but back in the day. So I will be giving out a few of those. I, I want to go into the live chat because before we started, we were a little late because we had some um, weird technical issues. I wonder if anyone in the live chat can tell us whether it's um, wavy or fuzzy or weird looking. Anyone? Bueller? I think Bueller? they would have said something. I wasn't was, looking at the chat. so It was fuzzy or weird looking. Tell us if it's okay, Martin Leedke or Shirtless Flat Earther or Cami or anyone. Thumbs up if it looks good on both screens. Come on, uh, come on. Uh, oh, Josh from Oregon says it seems good. Okay, wonderful. Hori Sheet says it looks fine. Thank you, guys. Thank you. It just looked weird from my perspective. No idea why. Hmm. I'll, go, I'll go back in the live chat and talk with everyone in a bit. Um, so that's... Great. Um, I do want to thank uh, Robbie Davidson for putting on this wonderful conference in Canada. There yeah. were about 250 people in the audience, and that's not counting the the speakers or the press. Um, it was handled perfectly by uh, the Fantasyland Hotel, right. and uh, which was attached to a gorgeous mall that was so big that none of us were able to walk the whole thing. Right. Um, we had fun. Everyone bonded. The conference speakers were excellent. I'm not sure whose speech I liked most. I really loved yours, of course. And uh, DITRH took yours and put it into video form. Other people have done that same, taking pieces of it. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I really like Matt Long. We mentioned him a couple of moments ago. Somewhat of a newcomer to you know going to a conference and speaking. He right. did wonderful. And Rob Skiba and, of course, Robbie Davidson. Uh, Robbie was addressing at the opening of the conference um, the fact that the local press in Canada, uh, there was a woman there who just was very um, assaultive, I guess. Or she came with... Um, uh, she came judging flat earthers before she even met flat earthers, let's yeah. just say. And the media does that all the time, and there's nothing we can do about not, it. Not like that, though. Right. She, that came, was she came in guns, guns blazing, and it's like, really? Really? Because you know you're going to get thrown out and banned for well, life. Well, journalism is um, kind of like the scientific method, right? right? I mean, nothing is completely solved. You don't go into a situation knowing that this is factual. You have to test and repeat. And journalism is that way as well. A reporter, if uh, they're doing a story on something they don't know a lot about, should probably look into it a bit beforehand and right. then go with their mind and eyes and heart open and then take notes and then come up with a story. Not just go with almost the story pre-written with flat earthers are crazy. Yeah. Flat earthers are stupid, and then fill it in once they get back to the, to the uh, copywriting desk. Yeah, she was um, yeah. she was biased right out of the gate, and uh, she didn't do it once. She did it to Robbie, and then did it during my Q and A. The Q and A in my case, she was just kind of fishing for anything, but she didn't use that part, which was fine. But. Well, other than that, there really wasn't negative press, and no. it really wasn't even that negative, and it's to be expected that yeah. any time Flat Earth hits mainstream, it will be a very rare moment when a uh, journalist, in quotes, by the way, because I don't think journalism is really alive and well today like it perhaps used to be in the past. It's just no. uh, people who read. Um, they read the wire service. <laughs> they read what's been given to them. And we've all seen on YouTube those compilations of reporters uh, across the plane, different cities, different countries, reading the exact same news story, the exact same right. way, with the exact same intonations and, and everything. Well, that's what it is. It's rip and read. And to get somebody to think first before writing and give something as crazy as Flat Earth a, a chance is going to take a rare breed of person. But right. it's happening here, there, and everywhere. And all we can do as Flat Earthers, if we are talked to by media, and we will be, even if we stayed in our own home, eventually someone's gonna say, hey, you're a Flat Earther, let me talk to you about it, it'll happen. Right. We just have to um, maintain dignity and understand that they can use our words against us, so choose words appropriately, and hope for the best. Um, you know, there's, 
there's no shame in doing your best when a story comes out and your words are twisted. Um, because what's the other option? Saying nothing, putting, you know, tape over our mouths and uh, not telling people about Flat Earth or getting them to at least look into it. I think that would be ridiculous. Why would any of us have YouTube channels at all right. or even participate on YouTube channels if we didn't want other people to know these truths? So all we can do is do our best. And I think that everyone at the conference did their best. And the press so far has been fairly kind. Yeah, yeah, so far. And the Canadian media was a little different, different than the American media in that they were in a big hurry to get as much footage as they could quickly and then get out. And On the and, first day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, don't even bother showing up for the second day. Let's shoot everything before lunch on the first day and put it up on the air and that's it. Well, that's because of the foregone conclusion that they came to, in my opinion, that, you know, Flat Earth's just a dumb thing and we're a bunch of weirdos. Right. Of course, they focus on one young lady whose mother was uh, a Flat Earther and whose father was not, but the father was kind to accompany her to the, uh, to the event. He's a scientist-minded person. So, right. But the daughter wore a baseball cap, which she herself covered with tinfoil. Of course, that was an attempt to be fun and cute. She was on her mother's side. She herself was a Flat Earther. But what does the media do? finds the young lady in the tinfoil hat and takes photos of it. Right. And then we had a radio station, a local radio station, a Canadian station show up. I don't remember the call letters of the radio station with um, the radio morning hosts and a little person uh, mascot, a yeah. little person wearing a globe shape uh, costume covering their midsection all the way right. down to below their knees. And um, that was, of course, to make fun of Flat Earthers. However, some Flat Earthers intercepted that conversation and taught them a thing or two. And what I heard was the little person was, you know, mouth agape after a while listening to sure. the, the truth about our world, thinking, oh, wow, that makes a lot of sense. So we may have maybe slightly opened someone's mind. He, possibly that he was flat slapped. Yes, he was flat smacked, flat slapped, and I don't know what other word to come up with it, to come up with for that. But yeah, his life might have been changed, or at yeah. least a little crack, a little light coming through. Really, That's how it starts first. You said little twice there. Was what were you? What are you implying that he was no. small? No, not at all. Why don't you? you know, <laughs> why don't you say a little something? Yeah. yeah. Well. Um, <laughs> Moving on now. Um, this is the tea show for no real reason other than I have this blouse with teacups on it. So I said, let's sip some tea. And you know, did you know that sipping some tea is a euphemism these days on YouTube for gossiping, my hair's on my face, for gossiping about other people. Did you know that? I, I knew that about as much as I knew what hitting the glass was. Right, right, well. Yeah. Yeah, sipping tea or spilling tea, it's a euphemism for gossip. Oh, I get it. I get it. It's its like, you know what it used to be called in the old in the old days, uh, the like dish. Like a coffee clatch? Or no, 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 no. I got, I, dirt. I got the dish. I got the deep dish on this. Oh, yeah, he's exactly. Di he's dishing her. No. Right. Yeah. Yeah, same thing. But we are yeah. indeed but now it's tea. tea. But we are not going to be gossiping about other people because... That's not what this show is all about. However, this show gives people fodder to gossip about us. And welcome. We're glad you're here. Please give the video a thumbs up on your way out and share please it. Take a, please take a screenshot of this hat. <laughs> exactly. I probably am not going to be wearing it again. No offense, Chris Pontius. I love the hat. Uh, and I don't know what the chat room thinks about the hat. But okay, let's let's take a chat room vote. Uh, by the way, Chris Pontius is the Flat Earth model maker, and right. he not only made the hat, he made the microphone Mark uses as yeah. a gift, which is why Mark uses it. Oh, yeah. Chicks so. dig the microphone. Absolutely. They dig a little microphone. I'm going to use the word little. All, and all guys, too. So. Guys dig the microphone. <laughs> hey, I'm not judging. All, all right. Let's do the thumbs up or thumbs down. Thumbs up if you like Mark's hat. Now, this is no insult to Chris Pontius. This is thumbs up if you want Mark to, Mark wear, to wear the hat. hat. Again. You can do thumbs up or you can just say love it. Oh my gosh, everyone's saying they love it. Flat Accord Music, Happy Vegan, Suzette Ann, Carrie Musgrave. Uh, Test Vision says it looks over the top. Um, let's see, what else? Uh, Awakened Mind says thumbs down. Helen Watts says thumbs up. Ridgeview, Zulu One, 
What else? David Romero says thumbs up. Um, Five Arts Liberalis, hey, says thumbs up. Ridgeview says he loves it. Josh from Morgan, oh, thumbs up. My Lord. Uh, Chocolate Sayan says thumbs up. What else? What else? Um, I think I saw a couple other people. I don't want to miss anyone. Anyway, I think apparently I, think I am. Everyone loves that I am the crazy. poster child for flat Earth excess. You wouldn't be caught dead in this thing, but me, that's fine. Put you know. Wind the monkey up, put a glowing hat on him. <laughs> Dean Lingley Sr. says, love it, love it, love it. Um, wow. So um, Zoe, be here in love. Hey, says the hats. Uh, Ranty Flatter says, Ranty says, thumbs up. Uh, Joanna, is it Joanna, Joanna Richmond? Johanna Richmond says, please take it off. <laughs> <laughs> she's um, obviously a woman of taste. Yes, she's a very, uh, she's, she's got fine cultured taste. Like, um, oh my, that's so Rudy cool. Marley, a skip the second says, love it. And celebrate truth. Robbie Davidson says, Mark's wearing a hat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, my God, it's so funny. Nathan Seriously. Oakley, 1980, says, it has lights. It's very, um, Mark. <laughs> yeah, that, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, in fact, I'm, I'm, I'm toying with the idea of wearing it for the interview right after this because it's, it's not a big interview. It's not like a major network. Well, you know, the only thing about doing that is to us within Flat Earth, because this is a fun show and this is a community-oriented show, you know, we all kind of get what's going on oh no here. no the the interviews it's a pro flat earth channel oh yeah, yeah well, then yeah. i think it would be okay yeah i think it'd be fine and and honestly you know like for this microphone i use the microphone for talking on various things and i mm -hmm. ask when i'm doing a video thing i ask them you know because they say whoa that's a weird microphone i plug it in and i go do you want me to leave it on or to leave it off most of them have me turn it off because they think it's over the top with the exception of buzzfeed they let had me leave it on yeah, but what did BuzzFeed want out of it to make yeah, it they fun? Just, I didn't, wasn't sure, but they never used it, so it was fine. Yeah. Well, for me, I'm a bit conservative. When no, everything. no, no. When people, it comes to people don't say that about you. Well, when it comes to presenting flat Earth to the public, just because I know how people are and how they rush to judgment and all of that, but you know, I also like fun, and that hat is fun. And there's nothing wrong with fun. So let's have some fun. I think Cheers. your definition of fun and my definition of fun are slightly... Having tea, reading a book, surrounded by cats, in front of a roaring fireplace. <laughs> right? <laughs> you are such a paradox. I mean, your collar is, is buttoned all the way to the top now. It is. But sometimes uh, you can't even tell you're wearing anything because That's you... true. I am every woman. Didn't Whitney Houston sing that song? <laughs> I think it was her. No, but you know what I mean? Nathan Oakley sums it up. Conservative today, rock goddess tomorrow. So you're, sorry, you're messing with me because now I've got Whitney Houston, her entire catalog is going through. I'm me. every woman. I don't like Whitney Houston. I mean, I know she has a good voice, but I'm not a Whitney you give, Houston you fan. You give but, good love. Yeah. Uh, I want to dance with somebody. Um, yeah. uh, Nathan says tea today, cocktails tomorrow. Very true. I guess I am that way. I'm I'm all over the place. Anyway, I think a lot of people are like that. We have our conservative side when the time is necessary for that to be had. And then we have a more wild side. Um, like uh, Robbie D says, girls just want to have fun. Yeah, yeah, some people aren't that conservative. Uh, take Poncho Pete, for example. Can you actually see him kind of? Yes, I can. No. I can see him there's a time when actually I think he's a really deep and serious guy. Have you seen this deep and serious side of him? I just know it's there because <laughs> most people who are funny have a deep side. And also it can sometimes be a wounded side. Look at some of the most famous comedians or even, well, pretty much anybody who has a lot of ha ha ho ho he he to their personality. Sometimes they put that up as a front, not that Pancho is putting up a front, to hide a wounded child or something inside. What so. are you saying that I'm, most of the time I'm crying inside? That's nice. Yeah, you're laughing on the yeah. outside. No, no, serious. It's okay. Inside. Take take pleasure in my pain. That, that's fine. Just a little. How many times have I said the word little today so far? I know. Today's today's <laughs> secret word should have something to do. Yeah, with. you know what? Today's secret word is going to be little. So if you've made it this far into the video, put it in the uh, comment section. Come back after the show has gone from the live show to to later on. And right. you don't even know why we're using the secret word is little. Just 
start it over from the beginning. We've, I've even got little teacups on. You do. That's true. So anyway, well, um, what else do we need to talk about that's um, involving the conference, involving, oh, we went to Banff. I think yeah. everybody has seen the- Everybody's seen the uh, pictures from that. So Banff videos. There's one on your channel, one on my channel, and a tremendous selection of photos on Celebrate Truth, Robbie D's channel. He's right. got all the photos there um, of the conference itself and the trip trip to Banff. That was a lot um, of fun. A lot of uh, great sharing of ideas. You know, it was, it was mostly the speakers and staff mm -hmm. and it felt like a, like a camp counselor meeting. Yeah, we had this big house we all pitched in to rent, and um, we hung oh, out together. You know what it felt like? Oh my God, I know exactly what it Flat felt Earth like. Flat Earth real world? <laughs> no, well, yeah, it all from the video side, it felt like Flat Earth real world, uh, Calgary. Uh, but We uh, went to the grocery store, and we all shopped for our own food, and then yeah. later we pooled it all, and Cami Nodell cooked for all of us a couple yeah. times. Yeah, and, it, was, um, it, was, it was awesome. Cammy made some great meals. It felt like, and, and I, again, this is an older reference, Bill Murray reference movie, mm -hmm. uh, the movie Meatballs, where they had their- uh, The camp movie. Yeah, yeah, the camp movie, where all the all the counselors took a couple days and went upstream, and they had their own little little thing without the kids. That's what it kind of kind of felt like. Well, I, I think it's a great idea when you it have that, like a conference, to have a, a portion later where- um, where speakers go to bond or as many yeah. team building because there's different speakers that are going to be doing these things as we go forward and it, it just i think it's really great uh we got to know each other on a on a whole new level i got yeah. to spend time well i've already spent a lot of time with you but um with with robbie and with rob skiba and rob skiba is very much into health he's done a lot of um work on himself physically with working out and such and yeah. he shops in a very healthy fashion at the grocery store we went to this co-op and got our groceries and rob skiba and i were in the produce section and everyone else was like let's get bacon <laughs> <laughs> hey you know whatever i got, a lot, I got a lot of crackers and you chips. did and chips and i did eat a lot of your corn chips so you know i'm not the most healthy person all the time i do like yeah. occasional Corn chips, but anyway. Oh, wow, again, <laughs> Hank. Man. Whoa, Slow Whoa down they're there. vegan. No, it's okay to have junk food. Slow down. Food. You're getting Once out of control. Life. Getting wild with the corn chips. With your corn <laughs> chips. <laughs> yeah, with chips and salsa. I mean, you can't go wrong with that. I mean, I wish I had it right now. In fact, but instead, I'll, <laughs> I'll drink my very serious tea. It was um, it was a lot of fun. We did not sleep a whole bunch because we no. were we were doing stuff late into the night. Rick uh, Hummer was there. Uh, yeah. Matt Long was there. Bob and Cammy. Um, oh, Bob and Cammy's son Jaron was there, yep. which was so cool to meet him in real life. I need to actually give him a wrench. I told Cammy and Bob I was going to do that. He'd have yeah. to appear in the chat for me to do so. So yeah, good hopefully kid. he will. Like, yeah, like and him. he's uh, tall as well, and he's really intelligent. And uh, well, we all kind of knew that about him when I first started seeing him on YouTube with Bob and Cammy. But he was smaller then; and he's grown a lot. Oh, yeah. he, I would look at him and think, "Does he look more like Cammy or look more like Bob?" It's really a combo. His tallness will help him in staving off the the jocks because he is nerdtastic. Yeah, he in a is, good way, though. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's dorkalicious. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, but you know, I, he may be good at sports as well. I have no idea. We don't know. You know uh, who's good at sports? I think he's Matt more Long. Of, uh, I Matt think Long. He's more of a brain guy. Well, Matt Long is really good at sports. Yeah, Matt. Uh, yeah, Matt Long. Playing was... football. He's a golfer. Oh yeah, um, yeah. Matt he's Long. All around, all American boy from Texas. Huge jock. Yeah. Huge. Definitely. And Rick Hummer, not so bad at throwing the football around. No, no. He Rick, and Matt were doing that. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. And we uh, we shot a, quite a bit of Roland footage while we were up there late into Roland the Rolling ready? The yeah. dreaded Roland ready? The dreaded Roland ready. The big chill? I blame Roland ready for the, <laughs> the other couple nights that I didn't get sleep. So if you want to meet Roland Ready, you can go to uh, the last video on my channel prior to this show, 248. Uh, we do an outside show version of the secret show in Banff, uh, not in Banff, excuse me, in Calgary at the house we all rented. And he comes on as a special guest. So right. yeah, by now everybody knows who Roland Ready is a little bit. And you know that there's going to be a, um, a film being made with that character in it. Yeah. It's been talked about, discussed, and uh, some of the filming was done during the conference and on the on the after party trip that we're speaking of. Yeah. Um, what else? What else? Oh, I want to mention Cammy Nodell because after we all said goodbye 
from the Flat Earth Real World World House in Calgary, and we all went our separate ways. I flew home, you flew home, et cetera, et cetera. Right. Cammy had a serious incident occur with her eye, but it wasn't something like you get poked in the eye or you get an eye infection or or something like that. Um, it was something sort of different. Can would you want me to say or can we not say it? Yeah, I think so. Sure. De detached retina. Detached retina in one of her eyes. Yeah. And they got on a small plane to fly home um, back to Denver. They drove part of the way and then flew the rest of the way home. And while she was on the plane, she, I think, felt something weird about her eye. And then, anyway, she had to go have an emergency surgery. Hmm. And it turned out okay. She could have lost vision in one eye, like fully. At least the right. other eye would have been fine. But, oh, that would be horrible. Anyway, it turned out she's probably after visiting the doctor, I think tomorrow, going to be taken off bed rest and end up being totally fine. But um, yeah. I, I know people that have had detached retinas before. I don't know people. I've read about people having detached retinas. Yeah. And many people were commenting on Facebook that they knew someone who, who had one or they themselves had. And how you have to, after you have this surgery, lie face down. That's what the bed rest is. You have to lie face down, which is I think it would be incredibly uncomfortable, especially if you're you'd, a woman on your chest. I don't think that's that comfortable. You'd have to like get a hold of one of those massage tails with the, the oh, with the hole for your face, the hole through your face. Yeah, that'd be your yeah. best move. Exactly. So um, we wish Cami Nodell, who's in the live chat, well. And let me see if she. I'm, I, I don't have the. I have the screen up, but I'm not looking. Lovely Cammy woman says prognosis Cammy. is really good. Surgery was done in time. Um, sky's the limit in our live chat. Hello. Thanks for being here. Says my dad had to have his retina attached from a plane trip too. It's pretty serious surgery. So, wow. The plane trip played a role in his situation. You know what, you know what that would be? The pressure. The pressure change. So yeah. what would that do for astronauts who would be in a vacuum? Well, yeah. I guess they're in that special suit. So. You're right. They would be, well, when they... If they're the, if they're in the ISS and the ISS is real, they would also be susceptible to it, because remember, folks out there that don't know, and I did this test myself, they pressurize the airplane pretty much the highest altitude you can go without getting altitude sickness, which is about five thousand feet. So when you're up in a plane, the the cabin is technically at five thousand feet, and then they have to take it back down to wherever you are landing. So. You know, if you're landing at Denver, they don't have to change it much. If you're landing in San Francisco, they have to take it down to sea level. So, mm. yeah. Well, the only thing that we can say is it was caught in time. Nothing bad will happen to Cammy, And it was a tear in a horseshoe shape, she told me, something very unusual. Hmm. And uh, Constance Bruns in the live chat says, our eyeballs are very sensitive to pressure, and it's proof those astronauts are not where they say they are. Very interesting. Well, the eyeballs, not to get gross or anything, but the eyeballs are pressurized. It's uh, its a hmm. pressurized fluid. Well, ball. that's why people get, um, is it cataracts or something? That's the pressure situation in the I'm eye? I'm sure there's a pressure-related disease. I'm positive it's of it. Cataracts or the other one. There's two, and I get them confused. Uh, I can't remember. Um, everyone's saying to Cammy that they hope uh, that she gets better soon. Get better soon, Cammy. <laughs> Constance Bruns adds, our ear ducts are also gyroscopes and let us know without air that we are upside down, upright, etc. I mean, that's true. I remember as a child, being on an airplane would make me queasy, literally really? vomit. Um, my sister, brother, and I all, we flew a lot when we were very young, like five, four, etc. Uh -huh. We would know. To get out those, it's gross, I guess, but uh, get out barf those bags. Uh, barf bags, we called them, and get ready because when we landed, something would happen and we'd throw up. And we did it very elegantly and tastefully without making much noise and no grossness. And then we just threw them away. I've seen a... <sighs> Only as children. It doesn't happen now. Notable lack of barf bags recently. Huh. In, in that they used to be in every seat pocket. And I think it's part of the cost cutting measure. I don't think you've I've seen, seen them. I, th I think nowadays you kind of have to ask for them. It's like, hey, yeah, but by the time you ask for them, it could be too late. Well, it sneaks up on you. It's not like an amusement park ride. So no, I don't do I don't know. those either. Oh, by the way, it's glaucoma, not cataracts. That's what you, it is. Glaucoma. Uh, I, I, uh, cataracts are uh, the fuzziness or mistiness on your eye that happens when you're older. And yeah. uh, glaucoma is the pressure in the eyes. 
So uh, a couple of people are joking about your hat. Lenny from Canada said that's your take me serious hat. No, it's a, it's a fun hat. And somebody gave it to him as a gift and we're wearing it for fun on this show. It, it is, it is over the top in case you didn't miss it. You know, OTT you flat, you know, me, flat. look at that. It's flat <laughs> on the flat part of my cap. There's flat stuff behind me. The um, microphone is glowing. Cammy, who goes by Aisling 717 on YouTube, says that she's restricted from going over 6,000 feet for eight weeks. They filled her eye with gas and said it could pop. Hmm. I mean, <laughs> all right. Crazy. Yeah. Well, she's going to be fine. We know it. We all know it. And what we should do is have a collective thought. You can call it a prayer or whatever you believe for Cammy. And that's what I have done, and I think we, we should do. You know, interesting, Zulu1, Mark says, weed relieves the pressure in the eyes. And that is true, because people with glaucoma find relief with smoking. So. Right on. Smoke them if you got them. <laughs> Shanna Honea says, got to go. Take care, Patricia and Mark, and have a blessed evening. See you around. Thanks for coming by, Shanna. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, the Hori Sheet Show sends people Reiki or Reiki. I think it's Reiki energy. Who says uh, she he could send some to Cami? So anyway, um, everyone's sending prayers for Cami. We do have some sad news to report. Uh, I you know I'm on Facebook a lot. And if you don't follow Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes community page, I encourage you to do so. I post a lot of things about Flat Earth on there, some veganism too. But if you're not vegan, you can ignore that. Um, but what seems to have happened recently is there is a woman that many of us know through Facebook and many of us know by meeting her in person. Her name was Stephanie Avila. And on her Facebook, it said, Yeshua, wife, mother, truth seeker, flat earth, watchman for the almighty. And she recently died. She had cancer treatments. And um, I don't really understand exactly what occurred, but I did see a photo of her August 6th in bed with a smile on her face and just oxygen with the clear thing that goes into the nose. And uh, she was smiling and she said, this is August 6th of this year. This is a hard one to post. Let me keep it simple for now. Finished radiation, which is miserable. No chemo. God's my ultimate and great physician. Here's a glimpse into my journey. I love you all. And we just heard that she had passed on. And uh, that was uh, yesterday when I first heard about it. Uh, Carly Sunshine Medrano and uh, Tanya Burt and many other people are commenting on this on Facebook. So um, to the family of Stephanie Avila, Flat Earther, and what seems to have been a very well-respected and admired woman in the flat earth community i really really am really sorry we have another sad note to report this is only two sad things everyone but this this happens in the flat earth it's not all glowing flashing lights and little people dressed up in globe costumes and har har ha ha ho ho he he sometimes things happen you know bad things happen to good people and well Martin Leakey, Flat Earth British, his mom has been part of Flat Earth since I first met Mar Martin on YouTube. And uh, his mom has been with Martin in the background. She became a Flat Earther by listening to, to Martin do his live streams. And well, her name is Carol and she passed away. According to people who knew her, she was playful and funny and made sly jokes. And um, she used to say things like, quote, I wish I wasn't old. And she would just watch the different hangouts. She watched us, Mark. Mm -hmm. um, she, of course, really was part of her son's life. And Martin took great care of her. So um, I'm very sorry to Martin Liebke. And we are thinking of Carol now, who has passed on. So... That's the sad stuff. And all we can ever do is love everyone that we know now. We don't know what tomorrow will bring. It's crazy. Yep, I agree. All right. Let's talk about something else. What all right. We talk about? Uh, how about a... Hmm, how about... Le I, I'd like to give a quick shout out to Aaron. 
Oh, that's true. Aaron Kreshock. Aaron Kreshock. We he, were we were told about Aaron being on a uh, Comedy Central, right? Comedy Central. Uh, the uh, I hope I don't butcher this. The is it Jim Jeffries or Richard Jeffries? Jim Jeffries. I think it's Jay. Jim Jeffries. Jim Jeffries. The Jim Jeffries Show on Comedy Central, uh, and he was on last year with yeah. Jim Jeffries and a panel right. uh, of people that were talking about different conspiracies. And somehow, don't know how he did it, Aaron got on this year's panel. Only this year was a little different than last year. This year, it was focusing mostly on the whole Q thing. QAnon. QAnon. And uh, the guy that was sitting right next to him was, he's not part of QAnon, he's just a supporter of it. You know, one of the big channels, bigger channels. That follows. That talks, yeah, yeah, that follows it. And th it was interesting because out of all the questions they asked him, and they didn't, it wasn't a very long segment. And also, um, the, the bad thing is, is that I don't know who any of those other people are who were on the panel with Aaron Kreshock. Yeah, so. Uh, because this uh, Jim Jeffries Comedy Central thing, they didn't put people's names like Mark Sargent, you know, right. utter, they didn't, they just put these people on the panel. They could have literally been people pulled in off the street. So. Sure. I didn't know from what perspective any of these people were coming from, except Aaron, of course, and the guy who was pro QAnon because he's got a YouTube channel. I'll see if I can find the guy's name, but you right. go, you continue. Uh, yeah, so if anybody knows, check out the Jim Jeffries show and not the guy next to Aaron, but the two people on the end. Yeah, there's a woman. Uh, there's a woman in, with glasses. If anyone knows who, the, who knows who these people are. Uh, and a guy with shaved hair, a shaved head. Yeah. I don't think they were flat earthers. I, think I don't think they Aaron were. I think Aaron panel? was the only, I think it was the only guy that was representing us at the time. Uh, it was curious though, that the QAnon guy, and he was asked a setup question. It was, it was totally, well, the whole thing was set up. I mean, they well, put but I mean, the, a the laugh track underneath all the people who, who talked about various conspiracies. And right. Flat Earth was discussed a tiny bit, but Be only mentioned once. And that was because they asked the QAnon guy what the biggest distraction to QAnon was. And he said, he, without even hesitating, he said flat earth. And I thought that was really odd. And then, of course, you know, that's why Aaron was there. And Aaron tried to chime in. And those two went back and forth around oh, 20 seconds, 30 seconds. And the QAnon's argument was, well, all the planets are, are round. Therefore, the earth has to be round. You know, why, why would the earth be flat? And he, he, was, he did not want flat earth to be part of anything. And he, he kind of developed, in my opinion, the same attitude that uh, Robert's son, Genis, did, which was, you remember when he came out with the principle, which was, you know, about all these scientists who believed in the, the geocentric model, and that Flat Earth was this huge distraction. Now, Robert decided to go another track and make a 700-page book on the coattails of Flat Earth. Great. Good for you. Glad you did it. Uh, hopefully, it'll, it'll pay off for you. But this guy, he doesn't know what to do. Because, you know, in, in QAnon, again, not to diminish what it is, but we're talking about domestic sex trafficking uh, with, with members of political power. That's what we're talking about. Here. And many other things. I mean, I'm not a, a big... But that's, but that's the main, main focal point of yeah. it. Is, it's it, a gate and... Yeah. Trying to... Uh, the, the people who are pro QAnon. And I, by the way, if you know a lot about QAnon and think right. what I'm about to say is idiotic, please accept my apologies. Like I said, I don't know much about it, but from what I was able to gather from watching this little thing on Comedy Central, uh, QAnon the, is a group of people working together to wipe out all the bad people in politics. And right. perhaps Trump is working with QAnon. And the guy's name is Jordan Sather, S-A-T-H-E-R. -E right. That's the QAnon guy who is next to Aaron Kreshock, the flat earther. So on this comedy central Any, thing. Flat, it's not from a flat earth standpoint, it's not even really worth watching unless no. you, you want to see Aaron, which well, is fine. the thing is, is that any average person who's not a flat earther who wouldn't recognize Aaron Kreshock wouldn't think really any of those people were flat earthers. So it didn't make flat earth look stupid because no. all the people on there, uh, were just look, sounded like they were just discussing conspiracies and this Jim Jeffries put literally an old fashioned laugh track under everything they said or the producers did right. um and i'm sure jordan sather the qanon channel guy and everybody on that panel after they watched themselves on there were just saying oh my god you know because right. it made whatever they said even if what they said had merit 
seem ridiculous. So how do we protect ourselves? There's a lesson to be learned. If you're asked to do anything with mainstream media from having a laugh track put under things you say, I mean, is there something we can do? No, unfortunately, you are at the mercy of the producers. No different than, and we're, you and I are going to Behind the curve. We didn't even know it was going to be named behind the curve, the documentary, until it was already made and we were told and we all went, oh, but... Uh, you and I will agree to disagree I know, you think on, it's on the title because name. Okay. I think outside of outside of the community, yeah, again, remember I said, anyone that's been in the community more than three months are going to have a hard time with that documentary. If you just getting into Flat Earth, you're going to find it very interesting. But veteran Flat Earthers, it is, it is a pre-101 movie. And, and it's at another film festival in Los Angeles, and then it's going to Denver. So I think Denver. it's a film festival sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, and and it'll get, just get pick up speed because yeah, it, the LA festival is happening now. Uh, the Denver festival is going to be happening just before the conference, which is going to be in the first week of November. And then we also got into the Melbourne festival. Really? Yeah. In didn't Australia. I, didn't, I, didn't you send the? I sent you the link. Maybe you did, but there's been so much going on with all the traveling we've been doing. Did you get the memo? The I don't think so. Reports. We're, we're <laughs> catching cover sheets on them now. So yeah, the Melbourne, look it up. Uh, look up the Melbourne Film Festival and you will see uh, a picture of Shrek wearing some glowing blue glasses on it, which is weird. I don't know why they would use Shrek with blue glasses, but he is on the uh, the cover of that particular section in the film festival. Let's see. I'm looking Melbourne, Australia film. Yep. I'm looking on my phone. We'll just type in uh, behind. The, don't just type in behind the curve Melbourne festival. Okay. Um, like two seconds, and I will cover for Patricia while she's doing um, this. Yeah, in August. Well, they've 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 got one going on next year in August, so there has no, no, to be no, one going on coming, now. It's coming up. Um, film festival behind the curve. Sorry. That's okay. You can do it either way. I know. I know you're faster at that than me. I can. I cannot use. As you know, I've never sent a text in my life, so it is very. Someday you'll send a text. I and it will be so. something his famous last words. Okay. <laughs> so it's. Uh, I see it. It came up when I. Well, uh, anyway, whatever. If you want to find out more, just yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, go ahead. Curve, uh, film so, com, and that'll tell you all the places that it is going. And it'll it probably been. get into more festivals. They did not fly down for that one, obviously, because uh, I found it. The Melbourne International Film Festival, M I F F, um, mm -hmm. and uh, it says it got highlights. Something called Everybody Knows and. Uh, acute misfortune, the cheaters behind the curve. It says this: uh, the surprising movement of people who think the Earth is flat. Yep. That's how they describe it. Yeah. We are yeah, the LA festival people, is, aren't we? Is probably going to be more noticed than most because they didn't expect to get into that festival. But because also, I think getting festival tickets to the LA one, from what we've been told, is quite pricey. Yeah. You can't just do it piecemeal like you could up in Toronto at that festival. Yeah, where you meaning just I just want to see this film and not the others. Yeah, no, they make you they make you buy a package. So hopefully the the LA people will get a chance to see it. It'll be cool. Uh, I, I especially recommend it to anyone who's in it in that area. Nathan Thompson, mm -hmm. a uh, prime candidate. Uh, but again, that was a really surprising one to get into because there it's not a documentary festival. It's a full blown film festival, and there were only eight slots for the documentary. And we got one of them. So that's that's a great sign uh, for, for stuff to come. And I wish the best for Daniel and Caroline and, and Nick. And uh, you know, cross my fingers. Anyway, we got off on a little side road because we're talking about we're at the mercy of the producers who make stuff. Yes. You and I will find that out again shortly. Oh, will anybody in Flat Earth? You just well, don't know. You never know. Well, what the well, yeah, but we've got that National Geographic thing that's going to be coming out next month. Oh, that. Yeah, right? Where, where they filmed the Salt and Sea test that they are the ones that decided, along with this debunking group to put together, we had no part in it. They did the test and it failed because they did it at the time of day when it's so hot that you couldn't get an accurate reading over the Salt and Sea if yeah. you tried. And I you know, that's when National Geographic filmed it. This is nothing that Flat Earthers created. Um, it's un something we just it's watched. If it's anything but a total hit piece, I will be impressed. And I've been in contact with Justin. The, the well, field, have the you sent producer. them the information when they redid the test? I sent him, him every came day. out with sent him positive for flat flatness. 
sent him tons of stuff, tons of stuff. And he says, you know what? I, I he, he said, he goes, it's, it's going to be, I, he was hinting it's, it's going to be better than what we think. So it's like, all right. Well, good. I mean, who knows? It might, might be surprised. Look at ABC, for example. ABC surprised us. Uh, I want real honest coverage by an actual journalist who's willing to look into Flat Earth and comes out the other side at the very least saying there's something to this. That's what I want. The next people that are getting into the documentary fray are going to be The Guardian out of the UK, mm -hmm. which is interesting because they've been following us now for a while and they want to make the, what they said a really objective piece to where they're going to, we've seen this before, they're coming to Denver. They're flying in with a team, and they're going to be shooting us there. And uh, and don't wear the hat in Denver. That just I'm not going to wear the hat in you. Denver. I. It would be a little bit wrong. You and I are so. By the way, the word different. little again. <laughs> yeah, we're 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 we so, are different, and that's so why we're a good different. team. You know, because uh, I keep it. I keep you're, it you're a little bit Kathy. <laughs> you keep I'm a, it. I'm <laughs> Regis, yeah. You know, really, like, I don't want to say that you're a little bit country and I'm a little bit of rock and roll. <laughs> what are you saying? That uh, I'm a little bit Western Nashville and you got a little bit of Motown in your soul? I think that's it, since I did grow up partially in Michigan. You know what? I don't know if it's good or bad, but I know I love it so. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit country. I Sorry, I watched the Donnie Marie show religiously mm. in the 70s because what else was on? That's true. I mean, we, people forget, people don't even know that on certain nights, there was only like two choices of things MTV to watch. MTV shut off at a certain time and they ran yeah. the uh, Star Spangled Banner. They, you Star, know, and then, and then it, I mean, the, heck, the, like, whole premise, <laughs> the whole premise of the Poltergeist movie was is the, the ghost came through the, the dead station. Yeah, it was yeah, a dead static. station with static. Yeah. And we didn't have remote controls. You had to walk to the TV to turn it off and on. Yeah, we really had it hard. And yeah, I we did. What, <laughs> Louis Anderson, he said, you know, I, and this was years ago. He goes, what, what are we going to say, you know, to kids, you know, how bad we had? It's like, I didn't have cable till I was 12. It's like, I remember a actual milkman coming to my house when I was growing up in Michigan, when I was quite young, like nine, eight, dropping off glass bottles of wow. milk that the milkman would then pick up the next week and leave new milk bottles. What neighborhood was this? Uh, Richland, Michigan, um, next oh, to the Gold yeah. Lake Country Club. So it was a nice neighborhood. Sort of, a, I about to say uh, that's like a Pleasantville type thing. Um, no, it was um, a country club, like living where a country club is, but not a development because they didn't really have developments back then, as far as I know. It was whatever. Oh. Anyway, um, oh, Dean Lingley Sr. says, and there were subliminal messages during the Star Spangled Banner. In fact, yep, that has that's been now right. yeah. shown. Yeah, I remember those. And um, you do? What did they tell you to do? Flat Earth. No. <laughs> when you grow up, look into Flat Earth. <laughs> Kill everyone that's not American. Yeah. Um. By the way, page forty-two says we still have glass milk bottles here. Now I know in the UK, yes, but in the US, it is not as common to have a milkman deliver milk to your door with, get this, um, paper covers that went over the top of the milk bottle right yeah and um they, there was cream on the top of the milk too right uh, nora no one's flower lives in the uk who says they used to have milk delivered in ireland until recently now i know there's probably milk delivery in america too but most generally i don't see where that is it's pretty uncommon right. most people get milk in a big gallon plastic jug which with the bpa in that that can't be good and of course, as a vegan, I'm not promoting milk drinking, but some people love milk. Risto K says milk is murder. Got you on that. But you know, a lot of other people love milk, and I'm I'm not here to judge. But um, yeah, right. Um, there was some interesting. Um, I'm looking at the live chat now. There was some interesting comments that we ripped right by while we were talking about all of that, and I I don't know if we're if I'm going to be able to find it. Let me let me scroll, scroll, scroll. Um, Da, da, da. Brian T says, I just drove across Lake Pontchartrain and guess what? No curb. Um, Rachel Hilgert says, shoplifters of the world unite and take over, referring to the Smiths. I like when people notice and give me some Smiths quotes in the live chat. Um, 
somebody wrote me a comment, which I deleted on one of my videos that said, all of you flat earthers, they spelled it Erfers, E-R-F-E-R-S, so you know it's a troll. All of you flat earthers have albums framed behind you. No one cares about your music. Uh, what flat earthers have albums frame behind us? Maybe uh. Uh, Anthony Riley and myself, and I don't think anyone else. Kind of a crazy thing to say. That's a troll for you. Anyway, um, what else is going on? Something. Cami said that the uh, Behind the Curve film is playing in Mexico at a festival today. I didn't what? know that at all. Now, I think she's talking about Behind the Curve, but maybe a different film, because she did send another link earlier about a film, so she'll correct me about what film that is. Um, there was another comment from Cami about Bob and uh, the Guardian. Yes, Cami writes, the Guardian has been in contact with Bob also about the conference. Um, Martin Leakey, Martin Leakey said he was in the guardian in, in a previous time and said it was a good write up. Um, wait a minute. Somebody's asking for D marble to be wrenched up. Why is D marble not wrenched up? That's crazy. Maybe D marble's got a different channel. That's, oh, you know what? I know why. Because from time to time, you've got a wrench now D marble and you always should have had one from time to time. I take away everybody's wrench like clean house, not right. out of any meanness, but just, and then I just start over. And While from you're time up. to time, I also unblock all the trolls and start over and let them show their true colors again. So D Marble, you were probably the last person that I took the wrench away from that I've given it back to. And it was absolutely nothing to do with anything D Marble did. My gosh, he's a, a gem, a diamond in a van, <laughs> as opposed to diamond in the rough. Oh, did you see the D Marble video? We need to talk about that. Oh, right, right, right. Uh, and what the a premise, smooth transition, if I do That was. Yeah, yeah. You know what? As far as segues go, that's pretty good. And while you're giving D Marble you, a wrench. You might even think I was in radio with that segue. You, you might as well give him some duct tape because that man is ripped. <laughs> the, um, <laughs> he is. Hang on, my ride's here. The. Uh, uh, okay, so D Marble made a video and he was talking about. I gotta get the name right. Uh, so, oh boy, Simeon Greater Greater Sapien, Sam Sapien okay. who uh, D Marble calls Greater Simpleton. Yeah, and the video is on D Marble's channel, which by the way has got uh, over 41,000 subscribers. Oh, way to go! Right on. Um, the name of the video is Polar Flight. Well, LOL, Polar Flight is canceled and Greater Simpleton got played this did surprise me a bit because that whole polar flight website thing was very well done very professional oh, very well, polished well look at all the stuff from nasa we all fell for that very professional very well done very polished stuff yeah this, our this entire was, life this was like came out of nowhere it's like oh yeah by the way we're gonna do a polar flight because why not it was gonna, um over the poles yeah com. yeah in a state-of-the-art uh, airliner and it was going to cost quite a bit of money to, to get on tickets. They weren't, in fact, they went out of their way to say no scientific instrumentation is going to be allowed. Yeah, right. And well, and by the way, why would they say no scientific experimentation would be allowed on a over the pulse flight? Because they hate flat earthers. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They are, boy, I got to come up with a term for that. Uh, flat earth haters? Anti flatites or something. Anti flatites. I like it. I like it. Yeah, I'm, I'm working on it. It's a working. We, we need to work. Yeah, we're yeah. working title. It's so, a little bit okay. <laughs> it's a little bit the okay. Use of the word "little." You got to remember, kids. <laughs> Patricia's quality standards. Normal people. Patricia's levels. Normal. Patricia. Somewhere up there. The bar is really high. Mm -hmm. As you can oh. imagine, it's difficult for me to hang out with her. And the bar is open. No. Ah. That's good. We're having right. tea, by the way. So anyway, all of a sudden, just recently, you know, as the globers, globalists are, are latching on to this, oh, this polar flight is going to really do something. Sight goes down, and it's crickets. The, yeah. the, the flight didn't happen, and everyone that was tied to the flight is MIA. Yeah, and Greater Sapien got his um, viewership of fellow globe believers to raise money for him to go on that flight. And it was right. thousands of dollars. Right. And he's left 
holding the bag, so to speak. Yeah. No, he won't have to pay the money back, of course. Well, I not. mean, out of respect for those who follow him, he owes them the money back. It's, look, sorry. If it was me, it's not my fault. You know, the, if, if the plane flight well, when gets... when you believe in Santa Claus and you make a bet that you're going to go on Santa sleigh and you get people to pay money for you to go on Santa sleigh and then you find out Santa sleigh is fake, I think that's your intellect that's said to in doubt. And I think you owe that money back. And well, Michael Cleary says about $20,000. 20k if, if the money changed hands meaning if it went from uh greater sapien what's the guy's real name do we even know uh somebody put it in the live chat uh, i don't whatever know. If, if he gave the money to the airline company right and they took it mm -hmm. it's out of his hands you know like what am i supposed to do the the plane's gone they, there's nothing i can do if he can't get on the plane it's not his fault i i know he's gonna be like well he might be able to, might, he, he's not on the hook i don't think yeah. Well, I think morally, morally he is. Uh, I don't know. I mean, if, if the money was still in his bank account, yeah, sure, kick it back. Right. But, if he, but if sometimes he people who get that large amount of money in their bank account will, I'm not saying Greater Sapien did, will take a little bit of it and start spending it. Well, you're starting to imitate me now? <laughs> With the will. <laughs> yeah, and by the way, that is a total ripoff, of, and I'll, I'll take the credit for this, total mm -hmm. ripoff of Samantha from Bewitched. Oh, I like her. When Darren was yelling at her and it, he was like, you know, Samantha, and she go, well. I really like how she could wiggle her nose, which I can't really do. You with know how she would wiggle cool, her nose? Yeah. Go, dick, dick, it's dick, it's dick. tough to do with that xylophone sound. Absolutely. It's actually impossible. Can, can you wiggle your nose? Can people really wiggle their nose or was that some kind of CGI? No. In the 60s? I'm just joking, but <laughs> all I can do is like, like a rabbit. <laughs> That's not that attractive. Sorry. <laughs> Is it supposed to be attractive? No, but when Samantha did it, her nose went side to side. She, they may have sped it up a little bit too. Yeah, something, something, something. Because I think, I mean, it's just, a, it's, just a, it's just a face movement. Anyway, the point is, is the flight's not happening. It's gone. It's not postponed like Elon Musk could kick the can down the road. I mean, it's like sight gone. Nothing's happening. And the question is why? Did they all of a sudden reach a point where they realized that they had to deal with the Antarctic Treaty, for example, which is what kind of D. Marble was talking about at the end there, which is, oh, yeah, we're going to do the fly thing. And then all of a sudden they realized it's like, oh, yeah, by the way, you have three more hurdles for this Antarctic Treaty, one of them, which is a huge fee. And you're like, uh, yeah, we're not doing this. And that's it. And then and then somebody, whoever at the highest level says, yep, that's it. Just pull the plug. Shut it down. Shut, shut the website down. No questions. Ranty Flat Earth says... Feppy Perth says that Greater Sapien never booked the ticket. Even if he didn't, doesn't matter. Do, okay. This is matter. speculation here, of course. If, if, if he didn't book the ticket, yeah, of course, kick the money back. If he did book the ticket, doesn't really matter. Well, then yeah, uh, doesn't really matter. The point is, is he has nothing to do with this. The point is, is the flight is gone. The flight right. is not happening. So, well, I mean, that says everything about everything. That thing yeah. was put there. That website was not. It has nothing to do with Greater Sapien. It was put there to just be another globe proof in case someday, right. at some time, someone said, you know, pole to pole crossing, blah blah blah. Yeah. So, yeah and the news media right at it. Yeah, you can look. Look at this. They they do trips all the time. And and what's sad is now the media stuff that sticks forever so the news media that covered this because it's an interesting story had the link to that site and now it's a dead link so you can find it you can you can look up the pole to pole crossing and find out who covered it and then when you try to click on the link to go to it you are out of luck sol as it were mm -hmm. yeah well um trouble about says if he never booked a ticket why not and where is the money so. well if he never booked a ticket but right. he's look it, it all he has to do is produce a receipt you know mm -hmm. he, could, he could flash that on screen in two seconds because they would at that sort of money there would be like multiple levels of receipts you know invoices hmm. uh brandon toy says over the poles scrubbed from the net yeah. and uh chocolate saiyan says that flight was a scam from jump well wait a minute wait a minute wait a minute back up back up for a second mm -hmm. is over the polls you mean there's no media stories on well maybe he just means the uh the actual website itself so, somebody confirm out there because um, i'm i'm not you know what i'm gonna look it up over the polls 2018.com hang on over the by the way while you're looking i want to say hi to flat earth poncho pete and vz and peanuts clark and tyne eldridge or teen eldridge uh recipe recipes find them 
kind of close, getting By closer. The way, while we were just started the show, uh, as the show was going, the Behind the Curve movie trailer just mm -hmm. premiered on the Film Festival YouTube page. Oh, 20, very interesting. 29 minutes ago, the channel is called Film Independent. Mm -hmm. Behind the Curve movie trailer and the Film Festival, I was wrong. Uh, some of the early showings, I think, were this month, but the other showings are going to start September 20th. Oh, very interesting. Okay, good. Um, hello to Quaalude Charlie and Lady Onyx and um, somebody else I wanted to say hi to, Leon McIntyre. And yeah, Pancho, we were talking about you earlier. You're going to have to go back and catch the beginning. We were talking about you and I was talking about how, how much of a deep person you are, although you make lots of jokes and, and always are having fun. But I can yeah, tell and you. And I was saying the only time he's deep is when he's unconscious. <laughs> no, that's when he snores. <laughs> <laughs> that's about the depth of, of Pancho Beat. The rest no, of the time he is deep. on stage. He is. He's deep. He, he is in character. You know that, well, not that Pancho Pete's a clown, but he's a funny guy. You know the song, The Tears of a Clown? It is about a person who's very funny, but they have great depth and sometimes sorrow inside. I'm not saying Pancho Pete's a s sad guy, but you know. That's a pretty old song. I don't think a lot of people are going to get that. Yeah, well, I think a lot of people know Do it. Do you remember the artist who sung it? Uh, yes, and right now my mind is blanking. Uh, Smokey uh, Robinson. Uh, yes, there okay. you go. Good. Um, D Marble says, Greater Simpleton, Greater Sapien, was in touch with a guy named Sam Chu. Sam is a NASA affiliate. Mike Helmick made a video about him. So check Mike Helmick's channel and definitely watch D Marble's most recent video on the, uh, the, the whole flight not happening. Uh, definitely worth watching. Uh, a bunch of people were <laughs> talking about wiggling your nose back to samantha and bewitched and i have to uh say that everyone is saying they're trying to wiggle their nose now <laughs> zulu one and uh ginger sugar bush a couple other people bill key says she talked about how uh she never moved her nose in interviews and it was moving her upper lip but it made us all think she wiggled her nose side to side we all can be fooled. We were even fooled by something as dumb as that. Isn't that crazy? And that's Samantha, bewitched. Hello to Stephen Chess and all people, free people. I might have said hello to you before. I don't know. Ute is here. Flat Jeffy is here. Um, Stiggy Vandersinsken says, can I get a shout in? You got a shout out. Um, and yep, yeah, VZ says, yep, the upper lip is the trick. So, hmm, oh, Flatter Vegan says, hey, Patricia, you're so fine. You're so fine. You blow my mind. Hey, Patricia. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Um, Flat Earth Vegans have a, I interviewed them, but they have a thing called Whole Life Potential, which is their company, and they do me vegan meal plans. So if you need vegan meal plans, somebody in your family is going to do a vegan cleanse or try being vegan, contact Flat Earth Vegans. They'll, they'll sort you out with that. Um, what else? What else? I know we have a bunch of other stuff to talk about. Uh, I'm sorry. I was I was doing the what over the polls. What were you polls. doing? I was, I was looking at the over the polls 2018.com. And yeah, there's there's people, there's other websites out there that prove it was, I mean, technically the site is still exists, mm -hmm. but yeah, it's completely empty. So if you guys want to check it out yourself, just go to over the polls 2018.com and you'll find nothing. But that segues me into the other nothing that was revealed to me last night by Peanut Gallery. Was somebody whispering a little little by the way the word little a little nothing in your ear it was a little nothing well actually it was a little something which mm -hmm. turned out to be nothing uh and it, it goes a little nothing from nothing leaves something who sung that gosh i'll have to look that one up uh all right so you guys can check this out yourself it's very very interesting and the peanut gallery pointed pointed it out to me which is if you go in like, like a lot of us we go into youtube or we go into google and we go into our favorite search engines we type in flat earth and we see what happens you can go to all our news or videos or whatever and he said you know something changed just a couple days ago if you go into google and it's only google only right so go to google type in flat earth then click on news everything seems fine right but then you go to tools and you sort by and there's two options one is sort by relevance that's what it defaults to but there's one underneath that says sort by date if you change it from relevance to date it shows nothing it shows no results at all and as you know that's very very rare to do in google i mean you could type in random letters and you're still going to get something 
And you're thinking, oh, okay, well, it's just a Google screw up. No, it only happens when you type in any combination of words that include flat and earth. So you could type in earth and it's fine. You can type in flat and it's fine. You type in flat earth, earth flat, earth is flat, is earth flat, question mark, blah, 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 any of these. You could type in flat pancakes earth and it'll, and it'll immediately, somebody put in a filter in there and I don't know who is, pardon my uh, words here, dicking with us, but what, <laughs> they are absolutely doing that. Uh, some programmer decided to go in and made a simple algorithm that says, if you see flat and earth in Google under the search criteria, don't show anything. And it's amazing that that they would do this. Now, does this hurt us? Not necessarily, because hardly anyone uses that filter. But the fact that somebody went behind the scenes to, uh, you know, create that little bit of chaos, uh, I thought that was quite interesting. Hmm. You can check it out yourself. It only works in Google. It doesn't work with uh, Bing or Yahoo. Well, what about on Mac computer versus a PC because I was trying to do it the other day and was telling you I wasn't getting the same results as and I've got a Mac. Yeah, it's a little different for you. I don't know what the tools are. I, it's been a little while right. since I've, I've done Mac. But all you have to do is, in Mac is just find whatever the drop down is when you click on news that changes it from the default, which is relevance to date. Again, fascinating that, that they would do this, which is why I, I titled the show from last night, Google Getting Clever with flat earth because somebody deliberately went behind the scenes like i'm going to mess with these guys hmm. and that's what it is well, and you're thinking no no they're not that's delusional well so, it'd be delusional if it worked for everything except our topic sorry i didn't mean to interrupt that's all right. it's, it's not the powers that should not be messing it's sort of like in disney films they put like a naked woman and or it's uh people in on the inside just playing it, around it could be just a, a garden variety flat earth hater that happens to work in a very certain section of the Google search engines. Or maybe they're saying hello to us. Like we are here, we are on the inside. Yeah, it, I, I, I think mean, there's they, something they, will be flat they, earther insiders who are at the helm of things like Google the, uh, or programming who can maybe help us. The, uh, maybe, or again, it could be them waving to us saying, oh yeah, we know where you are. I remember they tore down the scoreboard only like three weeks ago in YouTube mm -hmm. and people say, Oh no, that was a coincidence. I'm going to oh, no, be a coincidence. If it was an update to YouTube, which it wasn't, it was just very overt. It was heavy handed. This one wasn't as heavy handed because with the Google, with the, the YouTube thing, it applied to everybody. So if you typed in potato salad, you, the search results wouldn't come up. Right. So it affected everybody. This particular filter search was just tailored for us. And so kudos, whoever did it behind the scenes. I, you know, I'd like to see you try to go further. I dare you. <laughs> well, I mean, if they really wanted to get rid of us, no they flat could. earth searches would be able to bring up anything. Absolutely. They could they could do it very, very easily. So uh, uh, come up with something a little more creative than that, that we wouldn't find. Well, granted, it did take us about 24 hours to find it. Um, I do want to go back to what we were talking about in the song, Nothing From Nothing. I had to look it up. It was yeah. Billy Preston. And before I was able to look it up, Cammie came up with a link and, and put it in the, uh, in the live chat. And that's nothing from nothing leaves nothing. You got to have something if you want to be with me. Got so, it. Yeah. Good song. Uh, other flat earth. Let's, let's do quick flat earth news recap. Uh, Cause it's been, well, how long has it been? Since I feel been? like we've been on the road in Los Angeles and then back for like two days and then, and then bam out to, to Canada. Canada. By the way, Ridgeview was asking me um, to talk about the trip to Canada, but we did. It's at the very beginning of the show. And very it was beginning of the show. Can awesome. Can again, Canada was fantastic. If it is, it is a great precursor to the Denver conference. If, if the Canada was any indicator of what's what the Denver conference is going to be like, it is going to be wonderful. And if you want information on getting your tickets for Denver, by the way, Mark and I don't make any proceeds from tickets. We don't get paid to be there. Uh, we actually pay our own way wherever we go when it comes to conferences. Um, go in the description box of this channel and every video forward will have the link to uh, get your tickets. com. .com. <laughs> be there. It's what? Uh, November to remember. Be there or in be Denver. talked about. <laughs> no, it's going to be great. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of great people are going to be there. 
and I think it's going to be covered a lot because this time we 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 know what we're doing. That's what the Canada conference. We it felt way more organized. We yes. knew we knew what we were doing. It's like okay, here's what you know. You you could feel the clockwork kicking in, mm -hmm. and and uh, and everyone met with a, a lot of people, and we knew how to space out our time, you know, very well. We we did not be, go behind schedule. Everything was, uh, in fact, we even, I, kudos to, to you and everybody else when the fire alarm went off. Oh, yeah. Now, see, Ridgeview was asking me to tell my story about what happened. I, I get what you're saying now. And yeah, you're about ready to go into that with the fire alarm. If anybody right. has heard the the last, on the second day, the latter part of the day. The last event. The panel, yeah. yeah. And um, everything had gone so smoothly last event, there was these fires that were going on and are still going on in parts of Canada, creating lots of smoke in the environment. And I didn't really notice it in the first couple of days. No. But on the last day, I kind of noticed in the uh, in the ballroom where we were holding the conference in the Fantasyland Hotel, which was really beautiful, by the way, um, beautiful crystal chandeliers, gorgeous carpet. I mean, it was really nice, very upscale. Yeah. Um, circular tables with tablecloths, just very, very, very well appointed. Great choice, uh, Robbie D of Celebrate Truth. Anyway, I noticed there was like, wherever there were lights, I could see when you looked at the light, some smoke in the air, but I thought nothing of it. I knew there were fires. I just figured it was no big deal. But I believe that smoke caused an alarm to go off. And I'm used to American alarms, fire alarms. We all know what those sound like. But uh, in Canada, it's a whole different thing. Do you want to do a... And sure, sure. So Amer American alarms, as you know, they're really jarring. They're meant to get you out of your seat, you know, run around with your hands in the air, screaming type of panic, mm -hmm. uh, you know, like a like a submarine when all of a sudden you're going to get yes. depth charged. Type An stuff. American alarm is a cue to jump up, scream, trample people, and then eventually loot. <laughs> Knock over anyone you can, use children as shields. Right. But uh, in Canada, they've got it going on. They they, they, they get they, they they do a gradual alarm it's, warning. It's, it's there's like a pre-alarm. <laughs> pre-alarm in, in this case. They called it a first aid alarm, which wasn't the, but basically what had happened was some smoke had seeped into some of the rooms and multiple mm -hmm. fire alarms went off. And when that happens, because there's no fire, and it wasn't ringing bells either, like ring, no, like no, no, it was this tone. It was it was like a, a single bell chime, bong, like you'd hear it a bong. like a school <laughs> or an inter, in, intermission at a Broadway play type of thing. That's what it reminded me of. Because mm -hmm. in fact, when I initially heard it, I'm going, it's going, what in the you know, and and it happened. You know, we were looking at our watches when it started, and it's it's a series of chimes, like usually between eight and nine long, spaced out. You know, ding, ding, right? and and fair. You know, loud but not overbearing. Yeah, it didn't make you feel frightened. No, no, no. one started screaming and you know running. No, it's like a really loud clock chime, yes. and then followed by somebody getting on a PA system and we thought it was pre-recorded like mm -hmm. all the American messages right mm -hmm. you know saying <laughs> you know you know just just to let you know this is a what did they call it uh, a, a first aid alarm you know uh, a fire department has been contacted and they will confirm this shortly please stay where you are and you know other notifications will follow right and you know <laughs> And then some silence, and some then the silence, bell started and then again. The bells started up, right? And you know that's the one thing I will say about American. American alarms are short and sweet. Mm -hmm. Everybody panic <laughs> now, and it'll, and it'll be over <laughs> soon. You all be dead within minutes, right? Whereas this was like you know followed by these chimes, and this mm -hmm. was rinse and repeat. And after a while, we started picking up. I started picking up it's like because the person would come on. It's like, all right, uh, this is a first aid alarm. You could you know same voice. Mm -hmm. But they, the words were just slightly mm -hmm. different. I'm so going, you knew it wasn't recorded. No, and I'm going, this is live? They're, and they this actually was happening right when I started the panel show. I sat in a chair. Right. And I was about ready to ask the panelists, including you, some, right. some questions about Flat Earth and then open it up to the audience to ask questions. And uh, I looked at my phone because I had the questions written on my phone notepad. And right. my phone said 3.33. We were supposed right. to start at 3.30. And I said, it's 3.33. We should start. And right then, bam. Yeah, Bing. the bells, <laughs> the bells, the bells. Yeah, and and it, 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 here's where it again kills me. Americans, it's short and sweet. This thing drug on 
you know, Bell's message, Bell's message. Or mostly the whole. Well, the first part of it, 40 minutes at least, you know, was, was doing this. And after a while, the, in fact, the girl, either she took a smoke break, she handed the (laughs) microphone off to somebody else else. and another woman came on. And then the next time it went back to the old girl. And Mm -hmm. I think there was a guy at one. There was a guy. Yeah. And then it's, but, but finally we got to the end. So we, the, the questions that you asked the panel, mm-hmm. that was all bells. Right. And then the, uh, the second part where the audience asked the panel, that was mostly not bells. You know, right. it was, there was bells for a little bit. So it, it, again, credit to everybody who was there because we had to basically, it turned into kind of like a game show yeah. where <laughs> we had to answer the questions in the time of the bells before the PA system. And everybody got into the routine of as soon as you heard the PA system kick in, you just stopped talking. And I because, think my mic wasn't working too. So, or the bells were overcoming the sound of my voice. Yeah, it was. Um, it, it was, was really. Funny. It was not deliberate. It was, it was not sabotage it or anything was actually, like that. Actually, actually interesting and added levity, and everyone was laughing and joking. In fact, page forty-two in the live chat says, and then it asked you all to go close the windows in your hotel room upstairs, right. and nobody moved. It was nobody hysterical. Moved. No one got up. No. <laughs> and, well, okay. First off, I I guarantee that ninety-nine percent of people didn't open their windows anyway, because the windows no. in those hotels were only about. I don't know, maybe eight inches high designed so that even kids couldn't crawl out of them. Yes. Right. And so nobody had their windows open. I mean, it was, it was hot and everyone had their air conditioning on. I, right. I, there might've been a couple of people with their windows open for whatever reason. Maybe they were smoking in their room and right, right. it out. I don't know, but it was, again, it was very friendly. Appreciate the Canada's yeah. not very Canadian, very, very Canadian. So we never did get to that second stage of, whatever it was you know right. it's it like everybody run because remember this is a hotel attached to one of the biggest malls in the world and so it was we're pretty sure the message was only to the hotel patrons but not completely convinced and it was it was interesting it made for a very uh uh eyebrow raising end of the conference well we have on some people's channels they put the, um, and also on the Flat Earth Conference YouTube channel, they have the uh, all the different shows, all the right. different speakers. But Wendell, yeah. uh, uh, friends with Bipolar Flat Earth, who's here in the live chat, edit out the bells. Yeah. And I'll try to see if I can grab the link to that and put it in the description box. And- of- video later so if you want to watch that show without the bells that's got to be a little weird thanks to Wendell because you remember without the bells you've got people reacting to nothing yeah that's true you've got these awkward pauses for no apparent (laughs) reason uh now I don't know if he killed the PA system or just the bells uh and it was a few edits Wendell did in order to make it make sense so. so what is it worse is it worse to hear the bells or is it worse to actually have people look like they're losing their minds up on stage like they're waiting for, like you know what it would probably sound feel like 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 you'd hear like somebody in the audience was doing something and people were were pausing because of that anyway it was also, it was a ton of fun and even with the bells it was great loved it hmm for whom the bell tolls, it tolls for thee. Do not ask for whom the bell tolls. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Uh, a couple other things. Uh, congrats to Nathan Oakley for getting back on Vice up towards the top of the list again. Right. right. That's an uh, interview. Nathan did a great interview that was yeah. done over a year ago in the right. Oh, oh and, I, and we spoke with Vice. I, it's a good segue. I forgot about that. We spoke with lots of media and all the stories aren't out yet. I don't mean we as in just Mark and I. Many speakers, right. many people who were there at the conference. And we but don't know what will happen and when it will happen. Almost all the Canadian media came and went. You know, it's like, yeah, okay, we're here. We're going to do it. We're gone. Except for one group, which, mm-hmm. of course, was most it, basically it's an American Canadian collaboration. And that is Vice Media Canada where they sent a guy up and he was fascinated with the whole thing to where he wanted to hang out with some of the speakers after the conference was over and go out drinking. And, and we you know, did. And we did. <laughs> we, we took it. We, we went out to, well, the, the mall version, what was it called? Bourbon street. Yeah. Yeah. And, but it was fine. We, we stayed up late and, and he, we, we talked a lot about a lot of different things and, he was embedded with us, and it was great. So I'm, I'm hoping his story will be. I've got more confidence in his story than I do. Others. It will be favorable. It may not be favorable to flat Earth and proofs. That's up to him and his ability to take in information right. and you know let it sink in and do his own research. But 
he will be very favorable about the people of flat earth that we're not crazy. We're not right. losers. We're not tinfoil hat wearers living in our mom's basement that we're kind. We like each other. We love to have fun. Um, nobody got wasted drunk and did anything crazy while speaking with him. Right. And I think he really enjoyed himself, this vice magazine writer, and probably felt that was one of the more incredibly amusing and amazing experiences he's ever had going out doing a story. Yes. Because of what transpired do. during the evening, which I don't know if we're able to talk about. What, the Roland thing? Yeah, we can talk about it. Roland Ready. Roland, Rick, 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 Rick Hummer slash Roland Ready. Yeah, we're shooting some footage and we went to a bar that uh, it was a pub, a British pub that had an acoustic uh, singer. Up right, there. Who was a guy with, good. Yeah, a guy with a guitar and um, uh, amped up guitar, I think. And Playing the hits. Yeah, playing the hits, and Roland, who was no, dressed, Rick Hummer went up to him. Well, Rick went up to him and, and said, and "Look, said, hey, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna come in as this other guy. You'll know, you know, can I come up on stage and sing with you? I didn't think you could pull it off, and he did, and he sung two full songs Wait, with the guy. There's Greer, as if on cue. Do you hear that? Why? What's Greer doing? She always comes in with a toy and meows and drops it at my feet. It's so cute. Aww. Every show. Really? Yeah, it's so cute. That's well, nice. Anyway. So uh, he went up there and sung. It, 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 Rick's a good singer. He is. Rick he's is really a very entertaining person to be around. Very entertaining guy. And he and, sung as Roland Ready in the full Roland Ready outfit. And it's and, part yeah. of the film he's putting together. And I kid you not, folks, most of the people in that bar thought that Roland was part of that, that like they were a duo up there. And he and, just showed. Yeah. And they didn't think he was a guy wearing a costume either. Nope. Nope, he he blended perfectly, and mm -hmm. it was fantastic. And he shot the whole thing. He was doing that and shooting himself with a selfie stick simultaneously. It was it, yeah. was, it was perfect. So, yeah. I, and I the Vice guy couldn't have been more entertained. He's like, wow, this is really the flat earth. Because no he up. knew Roland Ready was Rick Hummer. Because yeah, he, he knew was Rick Hummer, he knew. and then he saw him come in with the Roland Ready outfit on, and he was like, whoa. And then saw this Roland Ready character, who he knew was Rick Hummer, get up on stage and start singing as if he was a professional singer. Right. It was cool. Right. It was really awesome. Yeah. Awesome. I haven't and seen you laugh like that in a while. <laughs> The thing about the whole roll and ready thing, it's not really an inside joke. We are all in on it as flat earthers. Right. It will be a very interesting film when Rick Hummer puts it together because it is a film, unlike Behind the Curve, um, well, I don't know. It is a film that will get people who aren't flat earthers to look into flat earth because the Roland Ready character is a guy who's not a flat earther when the, sh when the show starts, right. but he moves toward that. And I'm not going to give away the end as the show goes on. So it's more, it's, 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 it's following a person along and it definitely is not making fun of flat earth at all. It's just watching a person have that aha moment over a course of time. And it's also fun and entertaining. Can't wait to see it. A lot of flat earthers are going to be in that one too. It's not done filming yet. Absolutely. What are you doing? What are you doing? You're, sorry, you're, sorry, 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 sorry. I was, uh, I was, I was be before the behind the curve. You just reminded me that mm -hmm. uh, I've, I, I haven't posted my thing for behind the curve. I mean, it's, it hasn't even got its first thumb up yet. So you can type in behind the curve movie trailer. It's uh, and on film independent. That's the channel. All right. Is there and, something that we've not discussed on our? Drinking or sipping the tea um, show, um, where the by the way, where the secret word is little. You have to watch from the beginning little. to know why and put and it in the gold stars if you know, if you can find out why what re little is in reference to. <laughs> and if you come back, and I do hope you do to this video when it makes it from live, if you're watching live, to uh, you know when it's on YouTube, put in right. the comment section hashtag little. Be fun to see how many people do that. Right. Um. Is there anything else we? Have I know there's a bunch of things, things because I I have a list and then I don't. Do you? Okay, yeah, mental list and then things written down here, there, and everywhere that I want to get to and oftentimes mm -hmm. don't and then thanks. kick myself and it's too late and. Thanks to everybody that I met up at the Lake Stevens meetup in North Seattle. I ran into you know uh, Paul in the plane, D Marble, and a whole bunch of people. It was kind of a uh, last minute meetup in North Seattle. That was a lot of fun. We I want to go to another Seattle meetup for sure. Yeah, they're they're fun, and we took over this outside patio. I mean, just took it over. There weren't, in fact, we not only did we run out of chairs, 
we had to grab every folding chair they had from from their storage closet just to get us all out there. That was that was too much fun, and I got lost twice. Really? Well, I don't like using GPS, so I usually just map it out, map quest it, old school ground positioning system. You mean? Yes, exactly. And the you know when construction happens, but it doesn't happen till I don't know eight o'clock at night, nine o'clock at night. Oh, it's right. Zones. It's like oh yeah, by the way, this road that you came in on, yeah, you can't use that road going back. It's it's like a little test. It's like yeah, try to find your way back now, <laughs> because this road's your most direct way. Now you got to go all the way around. Hopefully you catch a ferry. The thing about GPS is crippled a lot of people, including me, because I rely upon it when I'm in a new city or even in Houston, which is so big. I usually stay in the Arts District, River Oats District, the Heights, around the area I live in. When right. I venture out in the suburbs to go meet someone or whatever, um, I can get lost because I don't know. I didn't grow up here. I'm not from right. Texas. And I rely on the GPS. And that creates lack of learning. Like we used sure. to have to learn how to get places. And now you just, just like we used to know each other's phone numbers. I don't know your phone number. I've got it. You don't know my phone number. Maybe you might know the area code. Uh, I do not have it memorized, no. Right, and we don't. And that's bad because, you know, eh, well, you mean, well, some by time the way. in the future where we need to get places without GPS or call people without knowing phone numbers. Yeah, uh, it's true. And we're, we're old school. I mean, people don't, don't remember that uh, the reason why phone numbers are seven digits long is because that is the limit of uh, your memory as far as the average person's memory, something you can remember quickly. Well, like they used repeat. to have phone numbers way back in the day when they had those switchboards where you'd get plugged in with a real operator. Oh, uh, with a real operator. And it would yeah. have a name, like, I don't know what the name would be, like uh, Smithton 5551 or whatever your number. Oh, was. right. Klondike 5. And mm, I don't know what it would yeah. be. Like that, yeah. yeah. Hmm. I don't think it was either Klondike or Smithton, but I can't think of what it really was. And those who are smarter will know, but that, that, those were good tries. And then they had to come up finally with, uh, and then they were really careful about numbers. They got, they got a handle on that pretty quick. You know, like, um, remember Tommy two tone, you know, eight, six, seven, five, three, oh nine. That was the last song that could ever do that because that caused a, you know, a lot of people of trying to call that. number. Oh, everybody tried to is, call it. Is Jenny number. here? Is Jenny, yeah. is Jenny there? <laughs> Jenny, Jenny. If you know and, and then they dedicated the, uh, the five, five, five to, uh, the film industry. Right. All films at one point would have like, call me, what's your number? Five, 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 one, two, three, four. Yeah, yeah. Because they had to use a number, but you can't give it out because of the legal implications. Hmm. Mm. Hold on one moment. Keep talking. Are you gonna? Are you grabbing a cat? I'm grabbing Greer because she's being problematic. I've got these lights set up, and my printer is next to me, and she was trying to knock over a a bell jar, which is over one of the lights. Aww. There she is. Hi, Greer. Greer Steer here, my female black cat. I love her. I love all my cats. <laughs> And all cats I in thought, general. I thought you were just going to pitch She jumped off like that. No, she <laughs> propelled herself off. Greer doesn't like to be held. Um, it, she Greer likes doesn't like anything. Greer doesn't like to be touched. No, she loves to be touched. Not by you, maybe. <laughs> but she doesn't like to be held. I don't know why. The other two cats are fine with it. But Greer will like try to wiggle. But she'll come right up to you and want to be petted. Mm. The, the cats have different personalities, just like people. Got it. You know? Got it. Um, I think we've covered it all. Uh, I think we covered it for the most we've part. We've augered uh, it into the ground, as we used to say. Hashtag augered. No, no, no. It's hashtag little. The hashtag secret little. word. Augered it into the ground. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Quick reminder, guys are looking for, if it's the first time you've heard it, and I, I actually ran into a guy yesterday who called me who didn't know anything about the Denver conference. He goes, wow, it'd be great if you guys were doing something in Colorado. I go, we're absolutely doing something in Colorado. It's the Denver International Conference. You should go. And so I just keep pointing to fe2018.com. Check it out. Um, other than that, is there Oh, I want to say hello to Mikey Smith um, and JK. And um, somebody's talking about party lines. Remember party lines? I never had a party line, but it's when you'd have to wait until this other family would be done talking and then you could get on the phone, even if you didn't live in the same house. Right. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Um, Come a long way. Yeah, we have come a long way, baby. I remember wanting to have one of those princess phones uh, when I was growing up because my mom that let me at one point get my own phone in my own room. Doesn't even begin to During high me. school. But then she 
told me I couldn't have it in the room. So she put an outlet right outside of my room. So I wouldn't be able to close my door and talk to boys or girlfriends on the phone. I would have to talk in the hallway where she could overhear the conversation from the living room. Because she was a smart mom, actually. <laughs> well, I hate you to know? say it, but yeah. my The my old son. ways are better now. Kids have cell phones and who knows what they're talking about. They're my, sexting. They're you know? talking about their rock and roll and their flat earth and their, their rock and roll lifestyle. Uh <laughs> I, by the way, uh, real quick, also the uh, the channel. Uh, shout out to that. Um, oh, what's her name? Oh, there's a really good channel. Uh, I'm going to look it up. I have it here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look uh, it up that, real quick. That, that's younger people, millennials. I guess you call Mill it. pre millennials. I mean, younger than excellent. us. Yeah, younger they're than in their I mean. they're in their twenties. And they came out with a great video today where they discuss various interesting things, not just conspiracies. But they title but it Flat Earth. Yeah, I'm trying and to. By the that. 11 minute mark, that's what they were getting into, and. A uh, group of five kids on a couch, led by uh, Regina George. And that's not true. She seems well, like she her name is Maddie Westbrook, M A D I Westbrook, B R O O K E. Yep. And the video itself is called Flat Earth. And uh, these, I guess they're millennials. I don't know what, younger than we are. Anyway, encourage um, her to make more videos. So go into the comment section. Yes. They love it, Maddie. Make more of these, more Flat Earth. In fact, that's yes. it. Just type in three words more Flat Earth. Well, the, the video opened with something non-flat earth oriented where right. Maddie brings up the fact that nothing is not natural. Right. And I've said this before, nothing is not natural. Everything comes from earth, right? Right. So even plastics are natural because they're made from things found on earth. So. Yeah, it's in the refinement process where well, we're going to take it too far. I mean, technically crack is natural. You know, it's it's a refined, refined, refined version of the coca leaf, but you don't want to be doing a lot of it. That's right, kids. Don't use the big rocks. The small rocks work just as fine. Don't the very to, little rocks. The little rocks. You don't have to take the big rocks and jam them into the pipe. <laughs> Gosh. All yeah. right. Well, I think we've caused enough trouble and havoc for the day. What? Hugs, not drugs. Yeah. I'm not advocating. I'm Thank just you saying. for joining us for the secret show, the tea sipping edition. Uh, it is. Yes. Quite but a change. I, I don't have an place. actual tea cup where you can hold your finger your finger out because I've got a mug. But I have a tea saucer. Do you have a tea saucer? Well, with my tea cup, which I didn't I'm use. More, I'm more. Oh, this is heavy. This is more in character than you're you are. You're more posh than me, is what you're trying to say? Well, uh, you know. I don't think so. <laughs> I was talking to the ghost of Diana the other day, and. <laughs> Uh, and she said the earth is flat from my perspective. Um, <laughs> thanks to Leon McIntyre in the live chat who gave us the best sign off ever. Hugs, not globes. Nice. So thanks for watching. Uh, we will be back again next Wednesday, hopefully anyway. Uh, give the video a thumbs up. Trolls always hit this video and hit it hard with their multiple sock accounts. So you can help by giving it a thumbs up. But even the trolls help too because a thumbs up or a thumbs down, according to YouTube, makes the video seem popular. I don't That's care right. either way. If I did care, I'd take the thumbs away. Support so. your beautiful host and smack those like and sub buttons. Yeah, that's right. I said smack that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Till we meet again, I had a little bit of fun with you. Yeah. See you later, Mark. Oh, I see what you did there. Yeah. Hail Hydra. George. Glooney. <laughs>